Hello everyone, I was just given this uh, Dyson V6 uh, vacuum to me today for free. Um, this is the Dyson V6 Slim. This would be like their base, base model Dyson V6. I think a lot of times they offered these as like Black Friday specials for as low as um, like $179 in stores. And uh, I was just given this this afternoon, uh, but there is uh, one stipulation and that's that it's broken. So they said it was dead and that it doesn't run at all. Uh, it actually does run, but it does have problems. So I'm going to see if I can uh, get this all fixed and tuned up, and I'll try to document it and show you how you can thoroughly go through your Dyson V6 and completely tune it up when it's ready for it, because this is definitely ready for it. Uh, to take the Dyson all apart, here are the tools that I'm going to use. You need a T8 torque bit that gets used to take apart the cyclone assembly, a small Phillips screwdriver to remove the battery and the wheels on the power nozzle, a small flathead screwdriver for getting under, under panels uh, and to pop them off, and a large flathead screwdriver to remove the brush roll. Uh, now I'm going to get started. I'm going to take the hand vac apart first and then disassemble the cyclone assembly. First I'm going to take off the filter and the bin. I'm removing all the parts that I'm going to wash. A lot of dust gets kicked up along the way, so I'm just sweeping off the excess dust before I wash these parts and set it aside. To take apart the cyclone assembly, you first have to start by removing the shroud. You have to get underneath the shroud at the top with a small flathead screwdriver and, un and pry open uh, six clips, and once you pop all of those, the shroud will drop right off. Uh, with the shroud off, it exposes uh, six T8 Torx screws that you need to remove. And before I could even get to those, there was so much crud built up where they are, I had to clear those out first with a small flathead screwdriver, and it was just really crusty and gross in there. Uh, and again, you could tell they had picked up liquid. So I had to uh, clear all that out. And then once I had, I could remove the five screws that let you take this apart further. So I cleared that out with my small flathead screwdriver. And then I swept it all off. Uh, and now using the T8 torque bit, I could remove the cyclone uh, exit. And there are uh, five screws. And just remove those, and then that main piece will drop out next. Once the stuff's all apart and won't be retaining water, you can take it all apart to wash. Now with those five screws out, just drop them into a little dish so I didn't lose them. And you can see all of the dust that was built up on the inside that just sweeping the vacuum off wouldn't have gotten to. And the vacuum had a horrible pet odor to it, so all this had to be taken apart and washed. Uh, there's the cyclone exits. That's where it spits the dust out of the cyclones. You can see all that built up dust. And uh, unfortunately, it just kind of built up over time. And I think this thing hadn't, it had probably been used for a few years and hadn't been properly uh, taken apart and cleaned. So I just swept that off. Uh, and then this part, uh, the bottom, that holds the filter and that just pries off. You can just pull that off and again you can see how filthy that is. So uh, that's going to get washed. That's where the filter sets on the inside. Now you can see where the cyclone exits are and actually the two closest to the motor assembly on the inside, they're black, were plugged. So uh, those need to be uh, unclogged. That's the first time I've seen that on a Dyson hand vac. Now to remove the cyclone itself, there are two small clips right by the motor, and you just push in on those, and you can see they're little white clips. And if you do that, I had to do it kind of evenly back and forth, and then the whole cyclone assembly top lifted off. This can actually be disassembled one further step, but unfortunately the screws to do so were stripped. So that was as far as I could take it apart before washing it, but it can at least dry completely before I put it back together. So it came out fine. Now to take apart the power nozzle, first I removed the squeegee, and then I remove the end cap using the large flathead, and the brush bar slides out. And again, um, the brush bar was in bad shape. The, uh, the end of the brush bar was all wound up with hair, and then uh, that's why the power head wasn't working correctly. It kept cutting out because it didn't have enough oomph to drive it because it was all tied up. Then I remove the wheels, and this is uh, totally optional, but on this one, because I was getting it used, and in a questionable state, 
I wanted to wash them and disinfect them. I didn't know where this thing was rolling around. So uh, I did notice on the inside of the wheels, there was hair built up. So it was good to do that. That was just with a small Phillips screwdriver. And then I uh, pulled off all the excess hair that was built up. And one of the ends, there's kind of a little guard there to protect the bearing, but it was all built up with hair. So eventually I got out a uh, box cutter and just cut the hair and removed it. And then on the inside where the sleeve bearing rides, there was a ton of hair built up. That was the problem with the power head. So I had to pull all that hair out. And then I ended up lubricating uh, the end cap where that brush roll rides right there. And that's the end cap right there, again, completely seized up. So I pulled out all the hair and muck that was built up in there and, uh, and then cleaned it. Next, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I found when I put it back together, it still had a smell to it. And I realized I had to clean the exhaust filter. There's On this model V6, there's a small sponge filter uh, that I wanted to get to and wash. So to do that on this model specifically, uh, you have to remove the battery first, and there's two Phillips screws. There's one on the back of the handle and one in the front of the battery. You have to do that to remove the panel to get to the filter. This is only on the base V6 model. The ones with the removable uh, HEPA filter on the back, you wouldn't have to do this. Then I had to pry from the bottom after the battery was up. And what I found was once it was free at the bottom, once that clip was unclipped, I could just pull it off and just kind of unsnap from the vacuum. And uh, it's hard to see in there, but that's a little sponge filter and it's filthy. All that discoloration was dirt and it reeked of pets. So I had to wash it, it made all the difference on this base model. Once I had the uh, filter cover off, I could then see the circuit board and the circuit board was dusty. So I wanted to very gently clean it off. And I did so uh, using a soft dusting brush. And I was, again, I was just very gentle with it. God forbid I damage any of that. So I was extra careful and just got all the hair and dust off of it. Uh, now with everything apart, it was time to wash the parts. So I didn't show washing every part, but what I did was I used uh, dish soap and I just, uh, you know, just hand washed everything, got all of the grime off of it the best I could. Uh, and then what I ended up doing uh, after everything was thoroughly washed, I put it in my dishwasher to disinfect it. And that was kind of overkill. I could have just hand washed it would have been fine, but it was just that extra little touch. Uh, so I knew it was ready to go and ready for use in new home. To, to clean the filter again, I put a little bit of dish soap on there and I noticed that the filter was really crusty and uh, it seemed like there was a mass built up in the bottom. So after trying to wash it out for a little bit, I realized I was gonna have to take the filter apart. So I got a small flathead uh, uh, screwdriver and there's three clips at the top of the filter it releases the cage in the center. And I pried those three clips up. I would have had to do this to clean this completely. I couldn't have gotten to the dirt otherwise. And I removed that cage you can see all that nastiness that was built up in the bottom. That would not have come out if I had just rinsed it out over and over. I had to take it apart. So I got all that, uh, that filth out of there. Uh, now I could more easily thoroughly wash the filter because the dirt builds up on the inside of these filters. They don't look bad on the outside, but they get really nasty on the inside. So it took a few tries. I just uh, uh, ran soap and water, and I did it a few times, thoroughly washed the filter, it came out great. Uh, between washing that and those little sponge exhaust filters, the odors were gone. Uh, now that everything was dry, it was time to put it back together. So I first started with this exhaust filter, which is unique on this base model V6. And there's little clips uh, and guides where the outer sponge filter uh, sets in. So I just uh, got it neatly back into place like so. And then this filter, I put it back in the way that it was in before. There's indentations where those little cords are on the vacuum. And then there's an indentation at the top. And you just kind of gently fit it back in. That little filter again reeked. It had to be washed and now it's fine. Uh, and then to put this uh, motor cover back on, uh, you had to line up the clip at the bottom. And it took me a while to figure out, but I realized why it wasn't lining up. I had to line up those areas just at the bottom of the, uh, the motor cover. And then once I had it all snapped right back into place. Uh, from there, I reinstalled the battery. And again, it was uh, two Phillips screws, one in the front and one on the back of the handle. Again, I, I did all this out of place because I realized after I put everything back together, I had, still had to do the exhaust filter. So now I'm gonna put the cyclone assembly back together. The motor unit and the, uh, the power nozzle itself, 
I wiped down with all-purpose cleaner and then alcohol and disinfected them. Got the switches cleaned and all the little buttons and everything you use. I made sure all that was disinfected. And I cleaned out the clear tray that the brush roll sits in and it came out pretty nice. Uh, now I can put the Cyclone back together. I first refitted the Cyclone exit assembly that holds the filter. And again, it just presses back on. It can only go on one way. The same with this part too. That guides the air into the Cyclones with all those little fins. Uh, once that was back in place, it all just presses on. It can only go on one way. I reattached the, um, the five T8 screws. Just pop those back in. I didn't tighten them down all the way. I waited until I had four of them in uh, and I dropped the fifth one on the floor. So then once I got that, I put the fifth one in. Uh, but you want to be really, really gentle because all this plastic's really thin and soft and light. You don't want to crack any of it because then you're, you're screwed. Uh, and then I put the shroud back on. And the shroud, there's six clips and uh, it only goes in one way. You got to get that big notch uh, facing the right direction on the front. And you just kind of evenly pop them all into place. good to go. Then I put the filter back together and again it was there's just three clips it just fit back in and taking that apart to clean it because it was so built up with crud on the inside I that's what I had to do otherwise I would have had to have bought a new one. Now to put the cyclone assembly back on it actually you just kind of evenly push it in and it just snaps in. Then you put the bin back on the cyclone assembly and you first line it up in the front where the nozzle is and then it clicks into the back and clicks into place and then it's good to go. Tested the suction on it, and we're back in business. It's working great again. Uh, now that the, the brush roll end cap was cleaned out, I put a drop of 3-in-1 motor oil on the inside, and now that was turning nice and smooth again, that was the problem on the power head, and then refitted the end cap. Locks into place there with a kind of a quarter turn. You can use a coin for this too, you don't have to use a large flat head. Uh, and then I refitted the squeegee assembly after it was washed, uh, and then I put the ball wheels back on. The screw sits in a little, like almost washer, and then that screws onto the wheel. With a small Phillips screwdriver. With that, uh, that was pretty much it. Give it some tests, and now it's working great again. Well, the Dyson V6 is finished. Uh, the main problems were that the power head was all tied up with hair and cleaning out that end and re-oiling the uh, sleeve bearing did the trick. Um, and then the cyclone assembly itself, the, the main filter was plugged, the exhaust filter was dirty and it stunk. And the cyclone assembly itself, two of the cyclones were clogged and the whole thing needed to be taken apart and washed. Uh, well, now that it's all back together, it's working exactly like it should. So doing all of that did the trick. I hope this was informative, but if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.